Hi everybody, welcome back. Really grateful that you can um, join us again this evening. So as Jenny said, we're going to be mainly looking at, we're going to be having a little recap on what we did last time and looking at where and how we can share our stories. So in today's sessions, we're going to, in order to know when and how to share our stories, not only do we need to know how to write them, we also need to know how to find them. So first, as I said, we'll recap on what the most important points parts of the story are, the five W's, the inverted news triangle, the importance of headlines and the pub friend test. Um, we'll explore our stories and the link to the Great Commission. We'll look at where to find stories and when and how to share our news. So the five W's, we looked at this last time, the five W's are, it's really six things, but who, what, where, when, why and how. So in detail, the five W's are questions whose answers are considered basic in information gathering. We want to know um, who does the story involve? What is the story about? What has happened or is happening? Where's the situ um, story situated? Uh, we want to get as local as possible because if we're submitting our stories to a local newspaper, we want them to know that the activity that we're carrying out is on their patch and is relevant to them. We want to know when is or did or is the subject of the story taking place and why the subject is important or why it is taken or taking place. We want to know how is this happening? How can people get involved? How can we find out more information? Now, if you remember, hopefully some of you do, we looked at the news triangle. Everything in the reader needs to know should be ideally in the first three paragraphs covering those five um, Ws. More important information can go in paragraphs four and five and, you know, less important details further down in our story. And the reason for this is because if you run out of space or something more important comes into your newsletter, if you have to chop information um, um, from the story that you originally intended to put in, you can just stop, um, stop information from the bottom of the triangle and you'll still have all the important information at the top. So headlines. Um, headlines are important. They often uh, give the reader, they're often what the reader sees first. They give a brief snapshot of what the story is about. We want them to be catchy and succinct and they're short form. They don't need to be a complete sentence. So uh, Jenny, could you please read uh, example one? Search for God leads to walk with God in Norwich. For one person searching for God in Norwich Eastern Synod, the answer came in an unexpected way, a call to walk with God. They share more with us. For some context, I've moved from church to church a lot in my life. I'm in a same-sex marriage and that means we struggle to find somewhere to settle. But after prayer, we felt God leading us to the URC and have been blessed with a loving, welcoming place to call home. More recently, I dis attended a discernment event to reflect on the cause that God may be putting on my life. And after the event was over, I decided to head outside to pray on it all. My housemate, who's a Roman Catholic, also felt pushed to head out and pray. So we drove to the Roman Catholic Cathedral together and split up so we could pray in different parts of the building. Thank you. So if we... Uh apply what we learned last time headlines the five w's and all that sort of thing you know what does the i think you can put your answers in the chat uh what um does the headline search for god leads to walk with god tell us the story is about does the title pique your interest is it catchy is it succinct who is the person doing the talking in the story where is this story located when did the discernment conference take place and what is the name of it so that a reader who is interested in attending such a conference might, you know, Google it for themselves and find out when the next one is. How did this person find a solution to their problem? Feel free to chat away in the chat. I'm not sure if anyone's writing in the chat, but I can't person it. Oh, here we go. It didn't really catch my attention at all. It seems not to tell me anything. It's a message of hope. Yeah, it definitely is that. Headline's quite lengthy. Yeah, 
it's all of those things. So if we look at it reframed, what we could say is that a walk leads the same sex knowledge couple to find a home church. So I had a go at, at, at redoing this story and I said Elton John had moved from church to church throughout his life in a same sex marriage since 2014. Elton and his partner were struggling to find a home church in Norwich. After attending vocations, a discernment conference in Wroxham last month, Elton says God's, God called him to take what seemed like a mysterious walk around the building. This led to an amazing discovery, a loving and welcoming place to call home within the URC's Eastern Synod. So we can just, you know, put the five W's in, the where's Norwich, who, we know who's talking, you know, we've got a date stamp in there, the, the conference took place last month. See what I mean? Uh, here's another example. Um, Lorraine, could you please read the first paragraph of this story? And so they grew and grow. Through the fellowship of its local congregation, Gillingham United Reformed Church has what often feels like a special relationship with Malawi. Within that relationship, for some time, the church has delighted in supporting Starfish Malawi, a Christian organisation whose mission is to reduce extreme poverty and build the kingdom of God in lives of children through collaborative work within communities, schools and churches in the UK and Malawi. Thanks, Lorraine. So if we break down example two, what does the headline, and so they grew and grow, tell us this story about? Who does the story involve? It's the same questions. Well, when did the subject of um, the story take place? Where is the story taking place? Why is there, um, there's a picture of knitting, so... It's about knitting. So why are the knitters knitting and how much did they knit? If there is a, a call to action, what might it be? So if you can put some answers in the chat again, that would be great. Not really deliver um, what the headline state is. All right, let's see. So this story, when I got through it to the end, first of all, I didn't, I didn't know what it was about because the headline and the first paragraph I, I didn't know, but when I battled my way through it, I thought it was so nice. But um, and what happened was kind-hearted members of Ginningham United Reformed Church in the Southern Synod knitted and crocheted a hundred blankets for friends in Malawi. As Jenny picked out this, um, the church has got a, a relationship with Starfish Malawi, which is a Christian organisation. Um, and what the charity does is fill a container um, with anything considered to be of value in Malawi, such as education materials, sewing machines, bicycles, blankets that the knitters have knitted, shoes, clothes, and much more. Blankets knitted by the church members will help keep Malawians warm at night during the country's cooler season from May to mid-August. I thought it was so nice that they were giving up their time and I learnt to crochet during the um, lockdown. So that's something that I could do. It might take me a year to crochet something, but it was so nice. So if we remember, I'm sure the person who wrote that Ginningham story wouldn't sit in a, a, you know, in a cafe and tell their friends that story. What they'd say is, guess how much, you, you know, blankets we've knitted. So what we want to remember is the pub friend test. The age of the reader we should aim for is around 10 years old. That way we can make sure our writing is clear, easy to understand and to the point. How can we make sure our writing is clear and easy to understand? We want to ask ourselves, we want to do the pub friend test. How would you explain this story to a friend across the cafe, at church, in a pub, over a glass of wine, while eating a kitchen, whatever you want to do? But how would you tell, um, how would you explain this story to a friend is the way you want to write your story? So what we're going to do now, we're going to break up. Uh, last time we um, asked you to write two stories, bring them along today. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into some breakout rooms and we're going to look at the stories, uh, one or, or one of your two stories that you've written, and we're going to um, explore how you found working with five W's in the news type triangle. Um, if your headline gives a snapshot of what your story is about, if it meets the pub friend test, or just discuss what um, elements you struggle with. If you haven't written a story, don't worry about it. If, you, if you're on a laptop or a tablet or, or your phone, you can just go on the BBC website, look up a story and just um, 
see if you can pick out the five W's. Look at the headlines and it gives you a snapshot. So we're going to do that for about 10 minutes. Is that great. Thank you. I hope you um, hope everyone uh, found that useful and they've been able to fit what you've learned to your stories or, or looked at the BBC story or something. Um, if anybody wants to email me their stories for further discussion or to see if we can do something with your stories, please feel free to email me. That's not a problem at all. Um, so what's the point in this recap? Not only do we need to know how to write stories effectively, we need to know how to find them. Stories are all around us. Um, as a trainee reporter, I've done, I've done uh, like a, a week or two at The Guardian, and one of the reporters there said to me, get people, get stories. And one thing a church or a church-related group or activity has is people. So why is it important to... To share your news well well firstly um our church related communications and news stories social media posts newsletters and magazines are a way for us playing our part in the great commission using yvonne Prenn's five steps in her book the five steps of uh, effective church communications and marketing to help your church create communications that fully fulfill the great commission we can use our stories to invite, which um, the ministry goal of which is evangelism. Um, what we want to do here is we can help people to identify our church or ministry, bring the unchurched into church, become regular members. We want to use our stories to inform, which is a form of worship. You know, we can um, help them to learn about um, our church ministry activity, personal salvation, or encourage them to join the church through our stories. We can include um, includes the fifth step, the ministry goal here is fellowship. With our stories, we can encourage people to participate in events, experience church beyond Sundays. We can use our stories to instruct. Uh, the ministry goal here is discipleship. We can encourage spiritual growth, maturity, discipleship, um, small group participation, um, which is what Surprise does. Um, we can... Um, inspires the fifth step and the ministry goal here is ministry we can encourage people to under to undertake ongoing service commitments um or or outreach or consistent giving and we can do all of this through our stories so where do we want to find news church related stories are amazing they inspire they uplift they spread hope and joy uh, the good news they encourage local newspapers love um good news it breaks up all the crime and the council stories and the serious stories that they have they need our good news um, our churches ministries church related groups and activities are filled with these good news stories don't think you don't have a story to share because you do they're all around us and include this includes the events that we put on because they can go in the what's on section of an, a local newspaper they can can use that for your social media post you can put your events on your website not um, you most probably do anyways but you know these are all stories okay so finding uh, where can we find inspiration well if we uh the evangelical alliance has a great commission website and they've got loads of topics of different stories on their website they've got different faith um personal evangelism covid19 children early years prayer, stories about the elderly, Easter, hot. they've got so much um, topics on them on the Great Commission website. We've got two short um, examples to show you. They're two short videos. Um, one's a young person called Beth. She wanted more from life, so was prompted to explore who juices these while at university. The other video we're going to watch is uh, about a chap called Sanjay, who's a biochemical engineer. He thought Christians had bizarre and unfounded beliefs until he met some and investigated further. And our lovely Lorraine is going to play those videos for us. My name is Beth and this is my story. So when I was a teenager, my brother was murdered and my dad had a stroke when I was 17. As a teenager, I didn't react well to the things that happened. I got very angry at the world and basically at anyone I could be angry at. So I didn't want to explore faith at first, but the thing that led me to do so was when I came to university, it was during Freshers' Week, and it was a great week, but it just felt like I wanted more. Two of my flatmates who were Christians said, um, why don't we do this thing called Texas Toasty, 
which is where you text the Christian Union a question and then they come and answer it with your dinner. So we text this random question and they turned up at about eight o'clock and stayed till half twelve, answering all the questions that I didn't know that I had. They really helped me in many ways when I was very adamant that they weren't going to. On the Friday night, I went along to Unite, the Christian Union's weekly kind of celebration meeting thing. And um, they all just stood up and started singing when we got there. And I just found that slightly weird. What is going on? Why has life turned into a musical all of a sudden? Why does everyone know the words and I don't? I was a bit overwhelmed, I think, and I didn't want to be a Christian, but I kind of knew that something was happening and something was changing in the way that I was thinking about things. A few weeks after that, I met up with my whole group leader and she brought me an ice cream and she sat me down and she was like, so what are your questions? And I was like, I don't want to talk to you. And then she basically told me about Jesus and people had done that, but I hadn't really listened. And then I went back to the weekly meeting, Unite. Everyone stood up and started singing again. And I thought, I'm gonna join in. And I was thinking things through and I decided that I wanted to be a Christian. So I became a Christian in that song. <laughs> the way I understand suffering is very different now that I'm a Christian to the way I understood it before I was a Christian. When I became a Christian, I asked a lot of questions. I read through the Bible cover together and found a God in the pages there that didn't cause pain, but that did redeem pain. So he promises that one day all pain will be made right and that there will be justice. And those things were just so important to me. I think for anyone going to uni, I'd encourage them with one thing. Ask every question you have and don't be afraid to ask them because there are answers and it's going to be the easiest time in your life when people are the most open to answering your questions to do so. And that was the biggest shock to me, that Christians are normal. My name is Sanjay and this is my story. When I left home I did a degree and then I did a master's and then I did a PhD. I think that sort of led me to then I went on to do research in biochemical engineering. So I was, you know, educating myself, learning, um, not really interested in God at all. There can't be a God um, as far as I'm, I was concerned then. If you just look at the world, how can there be a God? I ask the same questions everyone, every atheist asks, you know. I would say that the world was created not by God, but by um, reactions that are quite complicated. But <laughs> it's always the question, that, so what came before that? You kind of think there has to be more my wife at the time was working so I looked after the children and I had we had two then we had three so I met a lot of the the women in the church with their children some of the ladies said oh come to our church come and come in you know come and come through and and I said I'm not coming in your church building I'm not coming I know what you're trying to do it's not going to work um, you know here I am today and they didn't they didn't con me they didn't trick me I didn't kind of fall into Jesus by trickery or anything like that. They taught me, and they taught me in a very nice way. So they were all right. I thought, oh, these women are great. They're all right, they're normal. Nothing wrong with them. I wonder what their husbands are like. They must be a bit geeky. They must be Christian, you know, weird men. So, and then I met with the men, and it, you, I, I was, it was amazing because they were just like me. We believe in things that there are hardly any manuscripts about and any date, and we believe them and yet there are thousands of manuscripts about Jesus and we don't believe that. So it doesn't kind of add up and you have to look at what, you know, even scientifically, you have to look at what's there what, and, and then look at it and it points to the Bible, it points to Jesus was there, he did exist, he is true, he was the, he was the son of God and all those things and it, it's pretty amazing when you wake up. So I know I'm a sinner. And I know, I know I needed to be saved. And once I understood sin, then it became clear because I know I've been saved for all the things I've done. You know, it's amazing. You know, Jesus, you know, did that and I'm forgiven. So as you can see, they're just ordinary stories. We're, we're those people, those people are us and, and they're all around us. Get people, get stories. Um, 
So more about finding stories. Um, the LICC, the London Institute for Contemporary Christianity, has developed the SITSEMS, a framework to help us see how God is already working through us and those we know and to help our um, inspire our imaginations and in turn help them then that helping uh, to inspire stories like the six m's are models godly character so we can ask ourselves who around us is modeling the fruits of the holy spirit love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness self-control and how who um, around us is make makes good work so our everyday tasks can seem a bit meaningless but this M re means realising that everything we do is to and for the glory of God. So um, how are, are people around you making good work? They have to move you guys along. So minister's good grace. Who do you know that is going out of their way to think about others? Moulds culture. Who admits to making a mistake? Offers forgiveness, nurtures a safe space. Who around you is a mouthpiece for truth and justice? Who is standing up for the vulnerable or supporting a charity or food bank around you? You know, we've had um, um, stories come in from different parts of synods. And uh, one was a lady, uh, her name was Jean Ding. I can't remember from the top of my head, but she was running a, a stall at her church. And due to the coronavirus pandemic, um, she wasn't able to do that. So she moved it um, outside her home and raised, I think, nearly two and a half thousand pounds or something like that. There was a mum um, and a son, I believe in real, they opened up, um, they just, it wasn't a food bank, but they were, you know, opened up a, a stall at their church, um, got donations in and, and, we, and we're giving it to people. So who, who around, these people are around us, um, messenger of the gospel. This could be a testimony, as we saw with um, Beth and Sanjay, you know, of God's action in someone's life, a desire to share something with Jesus. Given a framework like the six M's, you can expand your vision to recognise God at work through the characters, actions, work, and the activities that people around you engage in throughout the week. So what we also want to do is we want to create in regards to finding stories, we also want to create context for stories. We want to be intentional about making space for these stories to come out. So, you know, what I do sometimes is um, I plan ahead. So there's, you know, there's interesting public dates. We've got, um, you know, we've got ministers in the armed forces. So, you know, like a um, day and stuff like that we, we I can contact them and say oh can you write me, uh, me a reflection you know Easter Christmas you know um last Christmas there was um you know the church and they, and, and they created a, a, a physical kind of advent box outside their church you know at Easter um a group of people went round their town centre and we were giving out palm crosses and stuff you know these are these are stories um and these are creating context those stories to come out so you know we don't have to take it all on our shoulders we can ask people around us um uh, to help us find those stories to help identify um frontline stories and, and frontline is the places where we spend most of our time um so we can think about sharing stories from a range of front lines schools neighborhoods workplaces retirement homes and you know and so forth so where do we want to share our stories? We want to share our stories um, on websites, in newsletters, on social media, blogs, local media. We can use the same stories through different mediums. People naturally repeat good stories. Your ministry um, church activity should do too. Um, stories on websites can be shortened or re-angled and shared in newsletters. Short stories in print or digital newsletters can be expanded on websites um, and on websites you can include YouTube videos or sound files. Um, all of these stories can be promoted on social media through the channels mentioned previously. So here's an example of a re-angled story that I recently um, did. Let's see. need to move you guys again. So, um, sorry, 
So in news update, um, I put this story. David Jonathan, the Berry Park URC member who serves as director for Luton Council of Faith, has expressed his gratitude after the organisation became the only charity in the Bedfordshire County to win the Queen's Award for Voluntary Service. Now in its 20th year, um, Luton Council of Faith will receive the award later this, um, later this summer. And I've just got a link for people to read, to click on the link and read more about the story on the website. Um, and then this same story is on the website and, I, and it's the same story with two different angles. I've started and um, this with a community organisation supported by the URC has won the Queen's Award for Voluntary Service. Um, it's going to receive the uh, award and certificate from the Queen's representatives. There's more details. Um, David Jonathan, uh, so forth. So we can use the same story, but just the angle it's slightly different. And on social media, I would have done the same thing again. So what we want to do on social media is um oh ollie deeks uh jenny mentioned him at the beginning of this session he's delivered three training sessions on social media um so if you go on urc children's and youth youtube channel you'll find um his three sessions he did sessions on social media for beginners improving your social media and posting on social media um, so if you want to get, go into social media in a bit more depth, I highly recommend um, watching those um, sessions. Um, but uh, for me, what we want to do is we definitely want to get our social our stories on social media. We can give a snapshot of what the story is about. This could just be your first sentence with a link back to your website to read the story in full. Um, we want to use hashtags uh, um, and tag organisations in our posts e.g. the United Reform Church on Twitter or Facebook or Christian Aid or URC Mercy Synod or the Tuttle Trust if your story is a food bank story. And what the aim of that is, is so that our post gains the attention of more than just our followers. We want those who are tagged in our post to reshare our, our news too. And if you tag them in, they're going to get to know what you're sharing and they can reshare it too. It's up to us how, how much, um, how regularly uh, you want to post on your social media channels, you can choose once or twice a day, you can choose three times a week, whatever you decide, stick with it and be consistent. So here's some posts uh, 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 that I've done. Um, one's about um, the URC and German partner. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say that because my tongue is going to get tired and it's never going to recover is inviting you to join a communion service for Pentecost themed our hope for the future. So some of the five W's is in there, the, the date, the time, who it's about, what it's about, and the link for people to find out more information. Margie Robertson, a, members, a member of Vickers Cross URC in at URC Mersey Synod, spent the lockdown raising hundreds of pounds for charity, find out, find out how. Click on the link to read more information that would take you back to the URC website. What she did is she, um, you know, she, she walked for water. She saw um, uh, an advert on Facebook about raising money for water aid by walking and, and she and she took up the challenge. Um, what's our next story? We've got Katrina Clifford, an elder at Trinity, hashtag URC in Wimbledon. Um, she's training to be a synagogue recognised lay preacher. She reached the final of Preach Magazine's Sermon of the Year competition. We need to, I need to follow that up actually, see if she won. Um, but that's what I mean, you know, these are, are stories and we can just shorten them on our social media and, and, and re-angle them and, and reshare them. So writing for a press release. Um, we kind of want to follow the same, um, we can use the same principles to write a story effectively. For press releases, with press releases, you know, and it's the same with stories, we want to aim for about 300, 350 words, absolute maximum, so anything flows fine. We don't want it any longer than one page because they've, they've got so much um, work to do and stories to, to assess to put in their papers. We just want to grab their attention, so we want to be succinct, we want to keep our story fast, but we can sell it a little bit, but let the facts speak for themselves. We want to help the media understand why our story is newsworthy. Um, so we want to include the five W's. We want to make sure 
the medium know they're invited to the event if your event is yet to take place and we want to use a memorable headline. Don't be afraid of local media. Um, yeah, don't be afraid. As a reporter myself, um, I loved good news stories. Um, we can find out um, when our local newspaper goes to press that you can aim to get your event in there, what's on page, or um, you can aim to get your news in there. You'll always have a general email box like newsdesk at newsdesk.co.uk um, or something. But I would say it's always good to make connections directly with a reporter and build, try and build a relationship with them. Um, so like if you're trying to fundraise for your church roof or something, you can say, come down, excuse me, look what we're doing. Um, you know, or if you've had a renovation or anything, you can invite them down to your event. So how to find, how to make a contact, you can look at the contacts page of the newspaper or website and get the net name, email or phone number for a reporter. Or you can contact me and I'll help you do that. We've got tools in the, in the, in the comms office that can track down um, a reporter anywhere in the country, really. We know where to find them. <laughs> We have our ways so don't 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 be afraid to contact us instead and always you know let us know if you if you do if you have got a story um to share in in the newspaper always let us know as well because it's good to have it on the national the urc's national website and on the, the social media channels so, or news update or digest you know don't forget to let us know as well okay people do not kill me I like my life. After all that, <laughs> not all stories involve writing. <laughs> One of the most effective ways of telling stories to your audience is through LICC's This Time Tomorrow. This involves interviewing a member of the congregation. At the, you can do this at the front of um, your church service with notice of course or or we call the video using a mobile phone about what they will be doing this time tomorrow where will they be what will they be doing what's going well there and what are some of the challenges or how is their faith making a difference and how would they like the church to pray for them you know we're not a news organization we don't need to sell news to meet circulation targets or to sell advertising space on our newspapers we can simply afford to tell stories that encourage us in our daily lives or to pray for the people we know so Lorraine's going to pl uh, play another video for us uh, of a young lady called Bianca Madhu she's actually a young person at the church I go to St John's in Hoxton she did um, the church created apprenticeships for young people to help them get work experience on their CVs because we uh, we've we identified that um, some of them were going for interviews and they kept getting knocked, knocked back because they didn't have experience. And how are you going to get experience if somebody doesn't give you a chance? So um, we, the church created um, opportunities for young people to do it work experience. She did this apprenticeship course, which lasted three months, um, so that she could gain um, experience for her university course. So um, Domain's going to play that short video for us. Hi everybody, my name is Bianca Madhu and I have been attending St John's for more than 12 years now, let's say from year one. This time tomorrow I will be attending a university interview, I will be doing school runs to help mum out and finally I will be joining John, David and some other youth leaders in Tuesday hangout sessions. In Tuesday Hangout Sessions, we briefly have a time away from school and anything that must, you know, anything that's stressful to the children or the youth, just to keep their mind off it. It's like a, I would say, is an escape space where you go there, you can do anything you want, like you feel free. In those sessions, we play games, we have brief discussions about how our week is going, our lowlights and highlights of the week, anything we're looking forward to. We talk about school, as you all know, we're in lockdown and the majority of us at home doing school, um, Zoom classes. So we just 
get a good understanding of how they are finding that um as i said we play games at the end so i would say it's like a good you know escape place for them to feel free and you know happy my challenges about this is that i am unable to meet all the youth leaders or youth team face to face so I don't get that much of a good representative of how they are and their behaviour and you know what good how good they work. My joys there is that I've met so many different personalities. Um, I feel very comfortable talking to a lot of the youth and the youth leaders. Um, I feel like I've built a good bond with some of them during our breakout rooms. At first it was a bit of a it was a bit hard as all of them weren't finding it easy to talk but now it's like you know they feel comfortable to talk to me like any other child my age right now um uni is a very big struggle applying getting to places so i please ask if you guys can pray for me for uni just get pray for my guidance that i go into the right path and when i do go to uni that god is you know looking down on me he's making sure i'm making the right decisions thank you so in summary see that was just done on the, her mobile phone you know we can afford to tell stories simply to you know pray for the people around us or to encourage others so in summary Remember the five W's, basic information we need to gather so we can organise the importance of where to place them in our stories using the inverted news triangle, the age of the audience to aim for so that our stories are easily and clearly understood, how to make our headlines catchy so they give a snapshot of what our story is about, um, why it's important to share our news as a means of playing our part in the Great Commission, how to find stories that are all around us to the people we engage with every day and their front lines, the spaces that they spend most of their time. You know, to help us find stories, we can use the six M's, a framework to help us identify the stories in the people around us, models God's character, makes good work, ministers grace and love, moulds culture, uh, mouthpiece of truth and justice, messenger of the gospel. Let's be intentional about our stories and creating um, spaces for them to come out. We can use um, public significant Christian dates to centre our stories around or just or just general you know like Action for Children Sunday sort of thing you know if somebody's fundraising for that or doing I think Children and Truth Youth did something for um, Action for Children they had um, Big Sleep Out or Big Sleep In or something you know to raise money for that. Boycott your bed. Yeah <laughs> that's it boycott your bed. It's next week. June oh wow. Cool. So we can um, share our stories um, on, on websites, in printed news uh, letters, in digital newsletters, on social media. Some of our stories have, have, have been on the radio um, or, or local newspapers. Uh, we can re-angle our stories for at least three different channels. We can use one story and have it on social media newsletters or website. Um, we can contact local press, you know, go on, go on their website and go on the contact us page and, you know, find the name of the reporter and write them down. Um, but like I said, if anyone needs help, um, any help writing the story or drafting a press release, I am here to help. My email is Anne, I don't know my email, anne-marie.ny at urc.org.uk or you can call me on 07976 753 950 if you want to chat. That's me. Thank you.